blame Pat. You can blame Pat, that's fine. I blame Pat. I don't know what I'm blaming him for, but it's Pat's fault. Yeah, probably. I Omar, how are my dims coming? Good. Almost done. Okay, do me a favor and get out of here, run me a print of 3,000, just until we sheet so I can do the same thing. Okay. 3,000? <coughs> yeah. Omar, I know you're going to be engaged in all this. You're not going to be trying to fill me up already. Dang. Hey, when you, uh, Is that everybody? Uh, yes. Dorsey? He's on our own. He's coming. Let me grab some heartburn medicine real quick. Sorry. Is <laughs> it that bad? Uh, when you run the print for 3,000, we get it before you do this. I mean, we'll try to catch any overrides and any of that simple shit. I mean, you know, I put three fucking easements in the wrong place. So. Yeah, we're going to try to avoid that now. Yeah. Like, if you print it for me, you're going to look at I'm not going to lie, those are a fucking bitch to read. No, I know, we're talking about it. But, like, I, so, I, but I should have gotten the right fucking lips on them at least. At least. Hunter. Right, so. LSIT trainee. I know. Right? <laughs> we won't be in here very long. Less than 30 minutes, I know. So, I worked 78 hours last week. Of that 78, how many hours do you think were spent reviewing work product and providing comment? 10. 20. Pat says 10, Omar says 20. Uh, 38. Somewhere between 20 and 30 hours, probably. Okay, so. Part of what, what I'm trying to accomplish here is reduce the number, the amount of time I got to spend doing review comments, right? It's like we talked about this morning. I want to spend more time teaching you guys stuff that you don't know and less time redlining stuff you already know how to do and we're just not paying attention, okay? So we're going to go through some examples on this record of survey. Okay, it was drafted by Hunter and Jim. I'm not picking on Hunter and Jim. I just thought I want to teach you guys how when you look, when you Every time you get review comments from me on something you put together, that's an opportunity to learn something, right? And not repeat the same problem on, on another sheet. That doesn't mean that I won't redline stuff, but we are really close to being a record of survey machine here, which is good. That makes it easy for me to make money. Like, you guys are starting to figure out what those things need to look like, and we've got some styles in place to put them together. Like. We are really close to you guys being able to do 95% of a record survey map. How many times, after we have the line work put together, how many times do you guys think I should have to look at a record survey map before it goes the first submittal to the county? Twice. Once. Maybe twice. Once, maybe twice. Okay? So we're just, we're going to go through some examples. Okay? And I'm going to, so what I'm trying to teach you today is how you guys can look at my review comments and deduce some common sense rules. Okay, that probably apply to your next whatever. If, you're, if I redline a record of survey, that, those comments will probably apply to the next record of survey. If I redline a site plan, it probably applies to the next site plan. Okay. So before I, we jump in, I'm going to tell you a story about a guy. We're going to call him Steve. I'm not going to tell you his full name. Smith. Because <laughs> this might go on YouTube. But I used to work for Steve. Julie knows who he is. Julian used to work for him too. So I had somebody put together an exhibit for Steve. This is before I was even licensed. And I don't even think I put together the exhibit. I can't remember. I think it was somebody else that worked for me, but it might have been me. And so I put together this exhibit and I brought it to Steve. And it looks something like this. Now, what? somebody look at that and tell me what's probably wrong with it. <laughs> uh, your numbers are Four decimal places. Don't even know what it is. Uh, your decimal yeah. places are way. I got too far. way. Okay, so that's not. Yeah. So what do we call that? What's this called? Too much precision. Too, yeah, too much. Yeah, yeah. It's called it's significant digits. Yeah. Is what it's called. Or precision. Okay. Do we measure anything that good? No. 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 Okay. So I should have had it probably rounded to the nearest foot. I can't remember exactly what I was doing. But Steve freaking ripped me a new one and basically told me if I ever brought anything like that to him again he would fire me and here's why the guy told me that he was super busy and his time was very expensive did he have time to redline that kind of crap no and I'll tell you the type of guy he was if I'd have brought him something like that again he'd have fired me 
How many times do you think I ever brought Steve a work product to review that didn't have the correct significant digits after that? Never. Never. Not one other time. He ripped me so bad, I never made that same mistake again on my work products. And I worked for the man another 10 years after that, probably. And here's the funny part. That was 15 years ago that happened. I still remember. Like, I'm telling you the story today because I still remember that butt chewing I got. Right? Now, do I want to be that guy? No. No, I don't want to be that guy. But there's a, there's a, there's a point to the story, which is, in theory, how many times should I have to rev on a mistake? Once, one time in your career, right? And I just want you guys to understand, like, there are guys that you may work for at some point in your life that are going to be like that. You get one, one shot. You, break, you screw up the same thing twice, and you're not going to be working for them. Like, I'm not that kind of guy because I think life's too short for that crap. But, like, you guys work for me and Will, and we're pretty freaking laid back. Not everybody you run into is going to be that kind of person, right? That's why this is so important. So I still remember that story. I have nightmares about it. Not really, but oh, the guy oh, wasn't the guy wasn't very nice about it. Okay. Shows All right. So let's back. look at no let's look at a couple things. We just these are just some examples. So let's look at this right here. These are asterisks. And what did I what did I tell Jim? Delete stars. Okay, so what does that probably mean on every record of survey Jim brings me from now on? Make sure it's a straight line. Yeah, I don't want to see those stars, okay? So should I have to tell Jim this on the next record of survey? No. And, like, if, if you guys are doing a good job, when somebody sees this, if they're really on top of their game, what are they going to go do in the template? Change it in the template. You're going to save the next guy some misery, okay? So, yeah, like, we have... Everything else we do see, what what do all our other titles have? Right here. You got the double offset. Yeah, and like I'm not saying I even like that, that's just what I've seen here. Right? So I just I want it to be consistent. Double what? what? The it's, double lines. It's the line that sticks out farther. So how that's the hell do you do that? I just know. I just copied it down. Okay. Alright. What am I telling him right here? Need yeah. content? Okay, so before you run me a print of a record of survey, what do you have to make sure you have? Every time. And if you don't have it, what do you need to do? Landon, I need the basis of bearing for this. And eventually, you know what would be even better than me telling you every time what the basis of bearing was? What would be even better? You doing it yourself? You're finding it out. Yeah, you could like, Landon, teach me how to figure out what a basis of bearing. How do I figure out what the basis of bearing is? So I don't have to be told, right? Because on almost all my maps, not all of them, but almost all of them, it's almost always a grid bearing, and you can get it out of TBC. Okay? I'm not picking on you, Jim. You did a good job on this, and I realize you were mopping up after Hunter, too. So. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not I, don't, I realize. I don't want, want, all I don't want Jim to think I'm picking on him. Okay, here's another one. Um, the real reason Jim's leaving? Mr. Calder doesn't like this note. So, what does that probably mean? Since he signs all my records of survey. Now I'd like to leave it on the boundary template, but it probably needs to, if we, I don't even know if we have a record of survey template. If we don't, we need to make one. We do. So that needs to come out, because getting updated every time. Yeah, he doesn't like the note. Okay. Well, is that just for ones that Calder doesn't like? Or if if he signs all the maps. Oh, okay. 95% okay. confidence on All right, so here's another one. What do you probably need to have for me before we run the check print? Notes. And those are going to be different. Those will be different on each survey, but you need to ask me, Landon, what are my notes? Okay, now these are your, you probably can't do this on your own. You probably need some help from me. But like, Jim's already catching on because, um, Jim, what did you do when you saw this red line already? That's true. And what about, you already knew what? Well, I already knew, like, part of the notes. He did the first two almost by himself because he already knows what I say, right? So that's good. He's paying attention. You looking for me? Just listening? Okay. All right, here's another one. I told Jim, hey, R1 should be the subject parcel vesting D. So what do you think that means on every boundary survey we do here? What is R1 going to be? Subject parcel vesting D. Every single time, R1 is the subject parcel vesting D. And they put it as three. 
was on number. That's four, I think. Number six. Now, this, listen, this is okay because I've never explained this to, in, to anybody. I've never made this a rule. Part of what I'm teaching you today is, listen, I would love to just have a manual for everything we do. Do I have a manual for everything we do? Like one day we'll get there, but right now I don't have a manual. So what I'm trying to teach you guys is how do you figure these rules? Like it's like it's like being married, right? Your wife doesn't always tell you what she wants. What do you got to do? Figure it out. You got to figure it out, right? So like I'm trying to teach you guys how to figure out the unwritten rules that I use from my review comments. And listen, is that fair? No. Is that ideal? No. Is that the system we're currently stuck with? Yep. Yes. Okay, so yeah, every single time the subject parcel vesting deed is R1. Now, why do you guys think, based on what we've talked about, I want the subject deed as R1? That's what we're surveying. We're surveying the subject vesting deed. That's R1. Now, if you have more than one, let's say you have three, then it's R1, two, and three. Okay. All right, so let's look at some more. I only have a few of these. All right. So this dark phantom line right here is the surveyed line. This is the line around the subject parcel. Okay, now I didn't redline this because Jim did it right, but what do you think, what do I want the subject parcel line to look like on every boundary survey? The darkest one. Dark, Most thick, and cool. phantom, every time. If you bring me something that's dash dark and thick, I am gonna be irritated, because you should know this, right? Okay? So look at what I got here. This is so this is the line that we're surveying. Now what am I telling Jim to add right here? Bearing and distance. Bearing and distance, calculated R1. What am I telling him to add here? Same thing. Same thing, right? Okay, what am I telling him to add here? Just the R1. What am I telling him to add here? The R1. So what are a couple rules we can deduce from those comments? I'm not gonna tell you, I want you guys to tell me. Always have your bearing and distance or your segments labeled. Which segments? You're right. Which ones? The actual parcel. Did I tell him to add one here? No. Your outermost ones, right? The subject parcel. Every segment on the subject parcel gets a bearing and distance label. Unless something really weird is going on. Are they always... Okay. Good. You did good, Omar. You are on the right track. Are they always... Is it always CR1? Okay. So almost always, almost always, that is going to be a C and an R1. In other words, what we calculated and what's in the deed. Now, in this case, I held the deed. So C and R1 are the same. I'm holding the deed distances. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, now, there are times when they may not be the same. Okay? In other words, I didn't find what the deed says. And so those, will, what you'll have is you'll have two distances. You'll have a C distance and you'll have an R1 distance. Okay, now, if we have monuments on both ends of the line, we don't on this one, but if you did, you would also have an M, okay? Actually, what you're gonna have is you're gonna have an M instead of a C measured, okay? So there's another rule, okay? If you have two monuments on a line of your subject parcel, what should you have on your distance? Measurement. Um, an M. Well, if they're found. Okay? So those ones are Cs because yeah. they're not found. Right? They're not found. Okay. Okay? All right. Okay, right here, what am I telling Jim to do with all these APNs? Text. Change the font. Okay, so you guys know what I want is I want parcel A and the map number bold, and I want the font to just be regular. Same thing down here. I don't need this whole thing bold. I just want this top part bold, and then all this extra information can just be the regular Sago UI font. So, okay. just out of curiosity, uh, what do you want your Anton font? I want my Anton font on the street names and on if we're calling out. Parcel one or lot two of a map or a deed. I want that in bold. Okay. And you guys will learn this. You guys. The point of today wasn't for you guys to learn these specific rules, but just how to deduce rules in in general from redline comments. So like the recording okay. info kind of. Yeah, the recording info, the area, the APN, and the doc number can be regular font, regular size font, regular font. Okay. Now, what am I telling Jim to add right here? The PM. The map number, right? What am I telling him to add right here? The map number. Because so, as a general rule, when we're doing a boundary survey, what do I want to see? The map numbers. The map numbers. 
generally over where the map is at. Okay, we have a font for that. I can't remember what it's called. It's on Notion. It's Lalindra or Lalindra or whatever. It's got kind of a blocky, chubby looking font. Okay. All right, let's go. Let's see if you guys can get a couple more. We talked about this one. Let's see. Okay. So, what do you think? What rule am I telling Jim right here? What rule can we deduce from this set of red lines right here? Uh, you have to draw your building corners at least. Okay, so what's the what's the general rule when we're doing a boundary? You gotta give building ties. If we have a topo, what would I like? Building ties. Couple ties to some building corners. If you're not sure which ones, we don't have to show them all. Come and talk to me. Okay. Why do I like that? Because it shows where the building is on the parcel. Man, that really helps a future surveyor. If he doesn't find any lawns, he can at least shoot his building corners and get an idea, right? Okay, now, not only do I want this dimension perpendicular, but you guys understand how if you just get the dimensions down, that building is sliding along that line? So what else am I asking Jim to do? The crow's feet. Yeah, give me some ties from the corner over to where you're pulling your dimensions on your buildings. Now, to be fair to Jim, he's never ha seen me ask for that before. Okay, but this is one of the first boundaries I've done where we had a good topo and I could put that on there. So this isn't, Jim didn't do anything wrong. How's that picture working out for everybody? Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty good. Okay. Well, we can learn it's hard to see, but I want to show you one other thing. What rule can we learn from this comment right here? Uh, corners usually have ornaments. If you're at a ma yeah, good, good, Pat. If you're at a major corner on the subject parcel, and there's no monument, you need to know. Yeah, we got three choices. Either there's a mon there and we found it. There's a mon there we looked for it and we didn't find it. We have symbols for each of those, right? Or there's no monument set in the record. Okay. So I just told Jim, hey, add a little note there. And that wasn't his fault. I don't think I've asked him to do that before. So, okay. Here's another thing you guys can do. This is just a suggestion. But if I, so, Omar's going to do a site plan for me today or tomorrow. No. I have it today. If he doesn't get to it today, he's not going to get to it this week. But he's going to bring me a site plan, and I'm going to redline it. What might it be a good idea for Omar to do with those red lines? Save them. Save them. Maybe you have a little folder in your dump. Site plan. Record of survey. And you just save your red lines, right? And what are you going to do? What's Omar going to do before he brings me his next site plan? Look at those. He's going to pull out those reviews and look at them, right? Because he'll catch stuff. Okay, the other thing you can do too, I like when you guys bring me, uh, Jim's good about this, when you bring me your revised print, I want my red lines behind it, highlighted in whatever color. So I know that you went through my comments, okay? And like, look, I'm not. I want you guys to know, I'm not asking you to do anything that I don't do, because what I when I get review comments from a county surveyor and I'm returning a revised print, Jim, what do I always send back? Send back the original comments and stuff. Yeah, and I send a. I send. I always send a letter. And what do I put in my letter? Jim might not know. We've only done a couple. In my letter, I always say, "Here's the comments I addressed." And I give them a list. And they say, "Here's the comments I didn't address." And here's why. Every time that map goes into the county surveyor, he, he's got a list of what I changed and what I didn't. Because I don't always change. You guys don't have a choice if I tell you to change it. you got to change it. But county surveyor, you don't always have to do everything he tells you, right? But I'm trying to communicate to him what I did, right? If you miss something on a second submittal that the county surveyor redlined the first time, what kind of mood do you think that puts him in? Oh, right. excellent. Very good. Yeah. He gets really cranky. And there are guys that will bill you extra if you half bake your revisions. So it's important. Anyways. What do you mean make you pay extra? Like they'll charge you. They'll say So normally you don't get charged for resubmitting? Or yeah. So the, a lot of counties will say our fee only covers reasonable checks. So if you're not if you're just being sloppy, we're gonna charge you extra now. Gotcha. Personally I don't think they're allowed to do that legally. That doesn't mean that they don't do it. Also, like you pay for the first one. Yeah, so 1200 bucks. you turn it in, 
and he redlines it and gives it back and you turn it in and you miss a third of the redline comments, he sends it back and says, with his new comments and says, by the way, you were sloppy, you didn't get the first third, so I'm gonna bill you an extra 500 bucks for my time to re-redline these, right? That will happen. I feel like that's kind of fair though. Is that like making him money? It may be fear. His, the it's not, it's city just. Money? Yeah, it's covering the, it's putting money in the county or city's pocket. So pretty like much if you, have you, have like, hours, hours, if you do your review right, he's like, okay, cool, whatever. But then if you do it wrong, yeah. he's no, gonna be like, oh, so sure listen, it, it like gets a little complicated. Here, here's why it gets, we're getting a little off track, but that process gets a little complicated because every time you send your map in, depending on the county you're in, somebody different looks at it. They don't always have consistent standards and they ask for crap that they're not allowed to ask for by law. So there's a little bit of give and take there. But my point is, do I get to be sloppy? No. I don't. I don't get to be sloppy when I'm doing review comments. So. so. By the way, how many mistakes do you think Mr. Calder likes to see? Yeah. No. Not, not very many. Yeah. Like, he's going to drop the F-bomb, dude, if you send him something that's got a stupid error on it. I, gu I guarantee you. Okay. So. Uh, Hunter, for, yes. All this stuff for regular survey mm -hmm. and our altas and everything else. Mm -hmm. Uh, do we have like a standard, do we have like a template file? So if we have an Alta, you know, just with some crappy parcel drawn on it. Yeah, so. The text that you use for that parcel. Yeah, and text so we're working on it. We're, we're yeah. working on it. I'm trying as we do things. I'm trying to like, so Julian's going to do some cleanup on our land title survey template. We're going to okay. use Sandhill. Yeah, so that'll help. Okay. And you like, you know, one day it'd be nice to like have some procedures in writing. We can hand to a new guy and get it. You know, he'll get an idea. So the strong is basically be the record server template because every time we do one, we, he finds things that he likes all the time. Yep. Don't worry about it. So it's kind of just. Okay. So I'll tell you another quick story. So I used to work at the meat department at Safeway, and the manager that there's two butchers, Chris and Paul. And I'd come in on Monday and I'd cut meat with Chris, and he'd tell me. You're leaving too much fat on that steak. The customers don't want to pay for that. I'd go in the next day, and Paul would tell me, you're cutting too much fat off the steak. So you know what I had to learn to do? Cut steaks two different ways. I learned to cut steaks two different ways, depending on whether I was working with Chris or Paul. Now, that was a pain in my butt. I was a brand new butcher. Okay? But here's why I'm telling you this story. Right now, you guys are doing learning to do things whose way? You're going to go to work for another LS one day, and he's going to do things different. I'm just going to go for work at Safeway. Okay, but now you have an incentive to never leave me, right? That's not the point, though. The point is pay attention to your review comments, because if you're working for Mr. Paul on something, he, he may do things a little different than me. So you have to use your review comments as a way to learn what? The way your butcher cuts meat. And you guys, have, you guys work for two different butchers. Right? The flame that goes, we all go. Now, what I, what Will and I will try and do is we will try and minimize those differences to the extent possible because we don't want to drive you guys crazy. But that doesn't always work. Thankfully, I'm not too picky. If Mr. Paul tells me this is how I like to do something, that's how I do it. It's like Will doesn't like a bunch of notes on his maps. So I don't put a bunch of notes on my maps. I normally have a whole page of notes. That's not his style. I don't want to rock the boat, make things hard for you guys. I just do it his way. My name's not going on anyways. Alex's name is going on most of the time. So, all right. Did this help? Pokey, do. Okay. Cool. You're dismissed. Thank you. <coughs> so you really used to be a coach, right? Huh? Yep. <laughs> so like you know, back like, in the dead cow. So you know how to like skin, skin them and all. Well, Dang. most of the meat you get in the store is always already, it's already it's quartered up. Quartered up. Yeah. So you ever hear the term crafty butcher? Crafty butcher? Crafty butcher. No. He likes to take some meat in the rear. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 you know.